My name is Andrew. I was born in Florida. And my favorite mythical creature when I was growing up was a, was a mermaid. Mermaids were beautiful. I loved their tails. I loved their bras. I loved their hair. Their hair was the best part, if not their tail. I loved their femininity, I loved how they moved in the water, I loved their shell bras, I loved their hair and their scales. And one of the good things about where I'm from is that there are almost real mermaids there because they used to think that the Florida manatees were mermaids. Serenia, known as the Florida manatee or West Indian manatee, have inhabited Florida for almost 45 million years. With a lack of any natural predators or prey, these sea cows peacefully trek through rivers and springs. As their name implies, Serenia were known to have fueled the myths and legends of sirens. Early explorers like Columbus believed them to be real, living mermaids. Many environmental protections were put up to protect the manatee. But what still threatens them? The Florida manatee sits at the precipice of climate disaster. In the first six months of 2021 alone, 10% of all manatees in Florida had died, hundreds above the annual rate of 2020. Because they are such a peaceful, prevalent animal in Florida, I wanted to make a film where I went on a boat with some friends or family and look for a manatee. So I went to Crystal River with Farah, who I lived with in college at the beach with one cat, and my twin brother John, who works with alligators. The child in me wants to swim with one so that I know what it's like to swim with a mermaid. It's hot, no? I like the little thing at the bottom right. You're gonna take it. Yeah,
the mermaids brought us to the city of the manatees. Adorned with monuments to the creatures, the city's physical structure informs us of the animals they worship. Manatees can grow up to 13 feet, almost four meters long. They have over 2,000 highly sensitive hairs on their face. 1,500 pounds. We are here to meet a manatee, yeah. only to find hundreds decorating the city. Will the fake manatees outlive the real ones? Did the fake mermaids outlive the real ones? Early explorers used to think that mermaids uh, were real because they would see them in the water. And in 1493, Christopher Columbus spotted three mermaids off of one of his ships. And he noted down that they weren't as beautiful as they had been written or described in legends because they were more masculine than he preferred or than anyone would have preferred. So I think that as a young child I could relate to this because I am a bit too masculine to be a mermaid as well, but still, but I think it's really cool and beautiful that they were believed to be mermaids despite being too masculine for Christopher Columbus. They are dying at an alarmingly unprecedented rate. Between November and April, Kings Bay is home to the largest aggregation of manatees in a natural environment in the world. This is Paige, our guide and swim instructor. She informs us about the risks of swimming with manatees and suits us up and loads us to the boat. Undisturbed access to the springs is critical to the manatee's survival. Resting manatees can be found near the water surface, partially submerged in the water column, or laying on the water bottom. They remain relatively still while resting, but may make some slight movements. Well, even like a ghost town compared to this one. We arrive to our boat, the Bennington, to meet Captain Troy, who has helped film the bay with National Geographic. Yep, so my day, my day really sucked yesterday. <laughs> but we did really well. Okay, that's what well, matters. We did well, that's well on the water, so that's all. <laughs> Manatee can withstand uh, down to about 68 degrees for 36 hours, and then after that they start to become hypothermic. If they become hypothermic, then uh, a multitude of things set in like fungal infections and uh, cold stress and, the, and bacterial infections. It's just like getting the flu or getting, getting a cold. I like to get as much garbage out of here as I can. 
Everyone just picked up what they saw. Exactly, and that's what we do. And it keeps things pretty clean. You got it, Paige? Yep, got it. All right, you're my hero. The time that I spend out here, the other thing that amazes me is how they are almost etheric or mystical in the way they function, that they uh, are such a large animal, but yet they can literally disappear into nothing. But they're so gentle, they don't even know how to produce any aggression to really do any more than just swim away with their baby. Um, it always amazes me how well they blend in and how uh, closely and acutely you have to watch all the little signs to actually see where a manatee actually is. Yeah. Um, what do you think? What do you like about them? First time they come up to your mask, and because their eyesight is so poor, so they sense things with the little hairs on their body. They can sense a heartbeat from six to eight feet away. So they'll come up, especially the baby, and they have that goofy little face and that tiny little eye, and they'll just float right up to you. And during the winter, sometimes when they're more playful and active, I've had them grab my arm with their flippers and pull me. Like it's almost like a manatee hug. It's not, you know, they're just doing their thing, but um, they're just lovable. One of the things that I questioned a lot as well was how they confused this kind of animal with a mermaid um, because they look very different. Captain Troy reveals to the crew a theory behind the mermaid and manatee myth, solving part of our trip, the dugong. And with the dugong, the, uh, the videos that I've seen and the references that I've read, they, they're, when they're eating the grass, it's literally going like that down on each side of them. It looks like a woman's hair. So dugongs, when they're grazing on grass, the sailors would see that, and it looks like a woman in the water with her long hair. And we see the same thing here, but it looks more like hungry, hungry hippo. <laughs> you just see their their, their snout, their yeah. nose going like that. If we are losing manatees, and we don't know why we're losing manatees, then. What else are we doing to the environment? At last was the time for me to get in the water and meet a real mermaid. Oh yeah, wow. Well.